Hello and welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. For this video, I want to show you some great tips and tricks that you can use when graphing any of your trig functions on a graphing calculator. For my examples, I'll be using a TI-84, but you could also use this with a TI-83. The steps would be exactly the same. All right. So first, let's get into some, to some good tips that uh, you really want to know if you want to graph a trig function using one of these calculators. First of all, it's important to know uh, if you are using one of these trigonometric functions, whether you want to be in radians or in degrees. It makes a huge difference when we start setting up our window uh, and what the picture will look like. Uh, usually you can figure that out from context, um, and most of the time I, I like to stick with radians, but it is important. Once you know whether you'll be in radians or degrees, it's also a good idea to set up your window a little bit different than the standard window. Uh, most of the time we like it from negative 10 to 10 on the, uh, of course, x and y scale. But when doing trigonometric functions, of course, a, a bigger window, say from negative 4 pi to 4 pi, is even, even better for radians. And if we're doing degrees, then negative 720 to 720 is much better for x's. Um, the scale, uh, I like to adjust my scale a little bit so you can see exactly those key uh, points it's hitting on the x-axis. And the y will actually make that a little bit smaller uh, because it actually doesn't go very tall, most of our trig functions. But you'll see when we set up our window uh, that this makes a huge difference in terms of what you can see for your trigonometric function. All right, so let's go ahead and get into those examples and see how this works. So first we want to start off with just graph graphing some very simple uh, trigonometric functions. So let me grab my calculator here. And the first thing I'm going to do is check my mode button right here. If you press that, you should have a couple of options. One will say radians, and the other one will say degrees. Simply choose the one and stick with it. Uh, we'll do uh, an example just with radians at first. So it's already set with radians, looks good. I'll press enter, and then second quit. Since I'm dealing with radians, we need to adjust our window so that it can handle um, um, the, the normal period of our trigonometric function. So go ahead up near the top, find window, press that, and let's go ahead and make some adjustments to our window. We'll go from the x minimum to negative 4 pi. So negative 4 second pi. And all the way up to 4 pi. And notice how I'm actually able to type in 4 pi and the calculator just simply converts that uh, to a decimal. Uh, that's going to be really handy. All right, off for our scale. The scale is usually set for 1. We really want to see when it hits those key points on the x-axis, so let's set this for pi divided by 2. Not bad. And let's go ahead and set our y scale from negative 2 to 2. So that's set up pretty good for our uh, trigonometric function. If we actually go ahead and look at the graph, you can see how now we're just going from 2 to negative 2 on the y, and every one of these tick marks represents pi over 2. So pi over 2, pi... 3 pi over 2, uh, one full rotation at 2 pi would be right there. All right, so now that everything's set up and good to go, let's go into our y equals by pressing our y equals button and type in sine of x. So sine of x, close parentheses, enter, and press graph. And sure enough, now we get a very good picture of what this sine graph looks like. Um, we have our window big enough so we can actually see a few different periods of sine uh, one, two, three, four different periods of sine as it goes along. Uh, the way we have our tick marks set up, we can see that it has a maximum at one, minimum at negative one, and sure enough, it hits the x-axis here at uh, two pi over two, or what we would just call pi. So not bad. Now, for a lot of other trigonometric functions, like the next one we're going to graph here, secant, it's important to know that we don't have a secant button on the calculator. For graphing other trigonometric functions like secant, uh, cosecant, and tangent, you really want to think of using your reciprocal identities. So for secant, I'm going to use 1 over cosine, and that will allow me to graph that function. So let's go into our y equals, clear this old one out, and do 1 divided by cosine. All right, enter. And now when we check on the graph, Sure enough, this is the graph of secant, and I can see what it looks like. All right, so you've seen a couple of examples using radians. Let's do this uh, as if I was in degree mode and see what changes I'd need to make. So the first thing, let's go into our mode and switch this over to degrees. Enter. Second, quit. 
Okay, so I'm back on the home screen, the calculator set up four degrees. Now we need to adjust our window. Uh, since we're working with degrees, I, and I still want to see a few different periods of the function, I'm going to go from negative 720 all the way up to 720. So you can see it, it's a, quite a big change. For the scale, every tick mark will equal 90 degrees. For the y minimum and y maximum, we'll go ahead and leave that there because uh, that's still the output of the function. It's still going to give us values between 1 and negative 1, so we should be good. All right, so everything is set. Let's go ahead and press graph. And there's our same trigonometric function. It doesn't look like a whole lot has changed, um, but that's because we adjusted our window correctly, so it, it actually looks really good. You can really tell the difference uh, of making sure that you're in the right mode by looking at what happens if we switch to radian mode and my window is still set up for degree mode. Now I, I don't really get much of a sense of what this trigonometric function looks like. It's all over the place. Uh, it's a mess. So that's really why you want to make sure that your window and your mode are matching up uh, and that they're really giving you uh, the same information. Yeah, what a mess. Let's go ahead and fix that back. Uh, mode, change it to degrees, graph, yeah, there's our secant function. All right, now some other great tips that you can do when uh, graphing these trigonometric functions is actually have a really good idea of what the trigonometric function looks like w without ever graphing it. And what I'm really getting at is the more you know your transformations uh, for that trigonometric function, the better you'll be able to graph it. So this is knowing your values like A, B, C, and, and D, which affects stuff like the amplitude, uh, the period, phase shift, and vertical shift. If you know those values, you can get a really good accurate picture of this uh, before you ever punch it in the calculator. Uh, let's give this guy a try and find some of those different transformations and then move over to the calculator and see how that information actually helps us. So if we were to go to graph this, I'd be curious you know, how it's changed from just a regular old cosine. And first I'd start hunting down these values. So I can see that A in this case is 3. B is right next to X, so it is a 1. C would be subtracted out here. I don't see anything, so 0. Uh, and D is anything added or subtracted, so it looks like D is negative 2. All right. So our amplitude comes from A. So amplitude we will say is equal to 3. Uh, when looking at b, that's going to affect our period. That's 2 pi divided by b, so in which case we just have uh, the regular period of 2 pi. Nothing's changing there. 0 for c, so no phase shift. That means it hasn't been shifted left or right any. And our vertical shift looks like it's shifted down 2. So this is important because if I think about my regular old everyday uh, cosine function, you know, I have a, a good sense of where it lives. It usually lives between 0 and 2 pi for one period uh, with a maximum of a negative 1, with a maximum of 1 and a minimum of negative 1. But this is telling me now my waves are going to be stretched out. They're going to go from 3 down to negative 3. And my phase shift is going to take this entire thing and move it down 2 units. So if I want to get a real good picture, I need to adjust my window accordingly. So let's go ahead and grab that calculator and do that. All right, so I'm going to go into window here and make some adjustments. Um, actually, this one's set up for radian, so I guess I, I better make some major adjustments here. Uh, let's go into our mode first. Go down to radians, so we'll press enter, switch that back. Now we'll go into our window and set it up for our particular function. Uh, so when adjusting the x values, you want to think of the period of the function so that it matches and you can see a few different periods of it. Um, the normal period of cosine is 2 pi, so I'm just going to go from negative 4 pi all the way up to 4 pi. I like to see at least two periods on each side. The scale, let's go ahead and set that to pi uh, divided by 2. And for our y, this is where we're really going to have to do some adjustments because the waves are, are bigger, it has a larger amplitude, and the whole thing has been shifted down. So let's set our y minimum to be, uh, let's see, a negative, let's, let's see, a, a negative maybe 6. And let's go ahead and set the y at 0. That should, you know, give us a good picture. 
All right, by doing a little bit of work of setting that up, now we can go into our y equals. Let's clear this old one out and put in our function, negative two plus three cosine of x. All right, I think we have everything set. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph. All right, so not too bad of a graph. I can see that it definitely goes uh, down. It looks like we're cutting off the, the very tops of those peaks. We should probably adjust that window so we can see a little bit more. Let's go ahead and set the Y maximum to be two, and that should probably capture it just fine. So now let's go back into graph. Ah, there's those peaks like we want, very nice. Uh, we can also see uh, a little bit more about where this thing uh, has a period, so it starts at zero, stops at two pi, does another period, stops at two pi, um, and we're getting the maximum value up here at one, the minimum value here at negative one, two, three, four, five, negative five. So a really good view of what this thing now looks like. All right, let's graph one more and let's throw in more of these transformations to see what this thing looks like. For this one, let's see if we can graph y equals eight minus two cosine of four x minus pi over two. So this has a lot going on in there uh, and we need to hunt down all of the values. Let's start off with a. A is the number that sits in front of our trigonometric function and looks like it's negative two. B is going to be the number in front of x, that's a four. C is anything uh, subtracted over here, so we have pi over two. And D would be anything added uh, outside of all that. Looks like we have a positive eight being added out there. Very nice. Now on to calculating some things. So our amplitude would be like the absolute value of A, so two. Because this A is negative, uh, I also know that this has been flipped from our usual uh, cosine function. Uh, it's not really gonna affect uh, it when we're graphing, but it is something I wanna keep in mind that if when I'm looking for that pattern of cosine, it has been flipped. All right, on to the period. This is where we take two pi divided by the absolute value of B. It's positive anyway, so I'm just getting a period of pi over two. All right, not bad. Uh, for our C value, this is gonna be our phase shift. So the phase shift will come from taking a C divided by B. So pi over two, all of that is being divided by four. And we're getting pi over eight. So the whole thing's been moved over pi over eight. And one last one, our vertical shift. Uh, this is going up eight. Great. So with all of this information, I'm gonna get a really good picture of what this looks like by setting my window carefully. Let's go ahead and grab that cal calculator and see what we can do. All right, so let's go ahead and go into window and start making some major adjustments. Uh, for our X, we wanna really think of this period right here. Normally, you know, I have it currently set between negative four pi and uh, four pi but this has a very small period. In fact, it'll go through two cycles in only pi. So I'm gonna use that for my new window. I'm gonna go from negative pi to pi so that I capture two cycles on either side. So let's see, negative pi will be our minimum. Pi will be our maximum for our x's. Now also, since it uh, uh, cycles pretty quickly, I don't necessarily wanna see pi over two in there. <coughs> uh, I'm gonna go ahead and set it to pi over eight. That'll also give me a sense of where this thing starts for the phase shift. So the scale, pi divided by eight. So when we see those little tick marks on the x-axis, every single one of them is pi over eight. All right, moving on to our uh, y. The middle of our trigonometric function is essentially sitting at eight. We can use our vertical shift and the amplitude to get a good sense of how we're going to capture this thing. So if it's been shifted up eight, and I know the peaks and valleys will be two away from that, say at 10 and six, then I can make my window even just a little bit bigger to try and incorporate those things. So let's go ahead and set our Y minimum to be at four, and our Y maximum to be at 12. So we'll just go just a little bit beyond those. 
All right, so all of that looks good. Uh, now let's go ahead and type this entire train metric function in and see what our graph looks like. So eight minus two multiplied by cosine of four X minus pi divided by two, close parentheses and enter. All right, let's take a look. Graph. All right, this is looking pretty good. Uh, I say that because we've captured uh, how tall it is uh, for its peaks and valleys, so I can definitely see that. Since this little tick mark represents pi over eight, I can see that sure enough, that's where my cosine or at least one period of it is starting. And here's where that period um, ends. And if we counted these, I'd end up with uh, pi over eight starting here. So then I'd end up with two pi over eight, three pi over eight, four pi over eight, five pi over eight is where it stops. And five pi over eight minus one pi over eight is four pi over eight. So I can see that it definitely cycles through. It has one period in pi over two. So all kinds of good stuff I can read from this. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of a, a a, a toolbox that you can use when graphing these trigonometric functions. And probably the most important thing that you can do when graphing a trigonometric function is really get used to adjusting your window to capture what's happening. Uh, the more you know about your function, whether it's in radians, degrees, or even these transformations will help you do that process. Uh, so definitely get really good at those uh, bits of information. All right, if you'd like to see some more videos, please visit mysecretmathtutor.com.